Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today, I'm participating in the Secret Not Secret Kit Club Telephone Tag YouTube Hop. Shannon Allure sent me a layout to Scraplift, and that's what you see on the screen. When I'm finished here today, I'm going to send it along to Janet Fritz. She's going to Scraplift me and send it along to somebody else. It's actually quite interesting how a layout can evolve when it's passed along from one person to the next. So if you want to see how this layout evolves, be sure to check out all the other participants. And I'm going to put their links in the information box below. I really love Shannon's layout. It's grid style, multi-photo, there are straight lines. I love that stuff. I also really love her color palette. So it's kind of strange I'm going with pastels because that's not something I typically gravitate towards. Before this video, I went through my tools and I selected some stamps, dies, and a punch. And I'm going to use these tools to decorate my page. I also made myself a sketch. I basically sketched Shannon's page. So you see the two borders, the grid in the middle, two embellishment clusters, and the title at the bottom. I matted four photos of Chester, and that's the little guy you see walking around my table. I selected my paper, that's from Pink Paisley and Amy Tangerine, as well as Stampin' Up! And I selected my tools, and I'll talk more about the tools as I use them, but I have stamps and dies from Stampin' Up! I also have stamps from Alt New, as well as Cartabella. I'm going to use those for my title. And I also have a punch from Creative Memories. Now I'm going to create my foundation page. So I'm going to place my photos. Mine are going to be a little bit towards the left, not in the middle. I'm also going to create two borders, and each border is going to have three pieces of paper. Mainly it's going to be this hot air balloon paper, but I'm also going to cut two narrow strips of the other paper for each border. Um, my borders, like I said, the left side is going to be a little more narrow than the right side, and the reason why I'm doing that is I know my embellishment cluster on the right is going to be quite a bit bigger than the one on the left. So I'm thinking maybe a larger border might be a better home for it. It's also fun to change things up a bit. So anyway, I'm adhering three strips of paper to each border. And when I do that, I will adhere them to the foundation page. I am going to put measurements for photos and page parts on the screen in case you want to follow along what I'm doing. And the measurements I'm putting are for the visible page parts. And that's particularly important for this border because the narrow strips that I'm adhering to each border are actually larger than the measurements listed, simply because I'm making them a bit larger and tucking them under the border, the bigger part of the border. So I'm going to adhere all of this to the page, but I'm not going to adhere the photos quite yet, because I'm going to want to work with the foundation page, and I'm also going to want to play around with placement of decorations, title, and text. There is another thing I did different than Shannon. Her grid is on one large photo mat. And as you can see, I matted all photos individually. Actually, I matted them with two photo mats. What you see me doing here is fooling around with a ruler, but then I abandon it. It's a little bit off, but then again, I know I'm going to be placing two embellishment clusters that are going to kind of hug these borders. So once everything's down, I'm not going to notice if it's a little bit off. But first, what I'm going to do is add some ink with these Picket Fence Studios blending brushes to the back of my page. And the ink that I'm using is Marina Mist by Stampin' Up! And I actually really kind of like how this is looking, so I'm happy with that. I place my photos, but I'm not going to adhere them right away because I do want to play around with decorations and all of that stuff. I did cut my title in advance and adhere it to wax paper for placement. 
That's what I'm going to use for journaling. So I select the white one, I'm trimming it down a bit, and I'm basically going to place it in the bottom right hand corner, which is also a nice kind of foundation piece for an embellishment cluster. Off camera, I made myself three hot air balloons with these dies from Stampin' Up. And basically, you cut out the hot air balloon, which is in black, and then there are these stripes that you can cut out with dies, and I can do those in different colors. So then I adhered them behind the balloon, and that's why I have multi-colored balloons. I'm liking this, but I'm finding the black a little bit heavy. So I reach back and I go get my dies and stamps again because there are clouds in this collection. So I figure I could stamp and cut out some dies. So there is a stamp for the smaller cloud, but for the larger one, there's just dies. And I'm going to cut them out with my big shot. So I cut out a few here. And then I stop the camera and I continue cutting. So in a minute, you'll see I have a pile of clouds beside me that I plan to place on my page. I'm hoping that these white clouds will kind of lighten up these hot air balloons a bit. And I end up actually quite liking the result. But before I play around with these clusters, I do want to continue with my title. So I get out these script word dies by Cartabella, and I'm cutting out the words welcome and hello. My title's going to be either Hello Chester or Welcome Chester. And at this point, I hadn't decided, so I figured I'd cut both of them out and decide later on. As you can see, I put an extra piece of paper in my Big Shot. That's just because my Big Shot is used so often, it's a little bit loose. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is play around with all of these decorative elements before actually adhering them to the page. So at this point, I have my title at the bottom, like on Shannon's page, and when I see it on the screen here, I actually quite like it. But at some point throughout this decoration process, I end up moving that title up underneath those hot air balloons on the right basically making a vertical design on this page. I'm playing around with placement of these clouds. There I go, moving my title. And when I start adhering everything to the page, the film is going to speed up considerably. When it came time to the decoration to actually adhering all of this to the page, it took me 13 minutes, so I sped it up 20 times. Basically, I'm adhering them in the very same spots that I had placed them. So I hope you're not getting dizzy at this point. What I do like here is I end up placing the word welcome on top of a cloud above the word Chester, and I ended up really liking that. Some of these clouds I'm putting up on foam adhesive and others are flat to the page. And what you see me doing now is actually punching out these wee flowers with that Creative Memories punch and just adding a sprinkling in each one of those embellishment clusters. And finally, what I'm doing is actually stamping a cat. I'm using a stamp positioner, the stamp -a majig and I end up going with the bottom right-hand corner, and I like that, except I end up getting an ink blotch of black on the bottom of the page, so I wasn't happy with that. Off camera, I tried to erase it, but it didn't work. I covered it up with a cloud, and I didn't like that, so I ended up lifting everything off the page, redoing my foundation piece with the blue ink and placing everything back down on it. And honestly, it was a 10-12 minute process. It wasn't a big deal. Everything was kind of in clumps when I lifted it. However, the paper that I technically wasted isn't going to waste. I was able to remove the adhesive and I plan to use it for the coordinating page. I'm just gonna hide that ink blotch. Anyway, this is the end of my layout. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Scrapbooking Quebec if you haven't already. Also, please check out the other participants. I'm putting their links in the information box below. The way this YouTube hop works is that we do one every day. So Janet's will be tomorrow and Shannon's was yesterday and there are other participants as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.